Um, I, I am Callie Ward and I'm the Home and Communities Faculty in Garfield County. And a little history about me is I do family and consumer sciences, but I actually was born and raised and currently help my family operate a cattle ranch in Miller County. And so I, this project has been really fun because I can dive into each realms of my, of my life and ultimately connecting families to where their food comes from and narrowing that gap of, of education and, and that food chain. Um, I want to introduce Jill. I'll give her a second to give her an introduction and we'll just dive right in. Okay, so I'm Jill. I started um, with Extension with Create Better Health and then now I just work with Callie. Um, and so, um, yeah, I have a nutrition degree. And so this kind of plays into that and also grew up with the agriculture background. So um, I think we're both pretty passionate about this project and we're excited to present it today. Hey, well, Carrie said there's lots of news regarding uh, family meal times, and we just recently got this announcement yesterday, right? Mm -hmm. that, that Governor Cox declared in Utah September Family Meals Month. And, and there's a reason why, because there's proven research that family meals are substantial um, in preventative measures, as well as just the social, emotional, and physical well beings of our families. Um, that's something that I remember doing and, and a personal practice in my life is to have family dinner with my kids as much as possible. And so we kind of had this fun idea, fun partnership develop over the course of, of during COVID. And we used, or we did this as a pilot program and hope to get it complete and have a master curriculum to share out uh, through the Create Better Health groups, as well as the ag agents. And it's just a great cross-disciplinary project to work together with the faculty in your office, as well as get producers marketing out there, get their private farms um, and their products directly to individuals within their communities. So I skip too many. Um, so again, it's through a lot of different research projects, there's proven facts that family meals can help raise grades in schools. It increases our self-esteem as children. Um, there's also been records of lower obesity in, in our children, as well as um, also suicide prevention. When we're developing these healthy habits and having this open conversation across the dinner table, um, we're just overall strengthening our relationship as a family and, and getting nutritious local, local food. So how, how this all began is my staff assistant actually is our women's committee chairperson for our county Farm Bureau. And Farm Bureau has different rings of it, but specifically ag promotion and education. And, and my secretary, she is with the women's community, but she's also on the state committee for this ag promotion. And so they approached me to do this little pilot and provided me some funding that I matched with 4-H after school funding because we're reaching the same demographic. And under my 4-H after school programming, we are always encouraging family bonding as well as family engagement activities. And during COVID, we weren't able to do a lot of face-to-face. -face. And so we came up with this plan for the virtual family dinner project. And we were able to identify six families in Panguitch, which is our county seat and our largest after school program. We've got about 30 to 40 kids that go on a daily basis. And so we kind of sifted through just individuals and, and maybe their family needs and who would ultimately benefit from this program. So we, we just did a broad outreach and said, 
please, please join us once a week for six weeks. We will provide a meal kit for you and a short lesson kind of related to um, just family relationship. And then we're connecting them directly to a producer. So again, we've partnered up with Utah Farm Bureau, as well as we utilize some of the Create Better Help curriculum. And then we've identified producers specific to a certain commodity that was in their meal kit. Is that where you jump in? Yeah. Okay, I'll turn the time over to Jill. So um, yeah, like Callie said, each week for six weeks, we delivered a meal kit. Um, to these families that had an element um, from a local producer. So we did onion, corn, beef, lamb, tomato, and turkey. Um, and so each week we had a meal, that um, a recipe that we sent out, and we did a meal kit and delivered it to their home just because of it was during COVID. So we didn't want to bring everybody together. Um, that would be kind of ideal if we could get everybody in one place with a producer, but <clears throat> because of COVID restrictions, we just opted to do the Zoom meeting. Um, so we did, um, and then on the Zoom call, we had the producers that presented um, just kind of a little bit about their particular program. Um, so example for beef, we had a local producer um, who just shared some facts about beef and then more about like his family's program and kind of what they they do and look for. And then um, the kids were able to ask questions and kind of go through that. And then each um, Zoom meeting also had an element from create, either Create Better Health's Family Meals Program, or um, we also worked off of the Family Dinner Project, um, has a lot of information about the benefits of family meals. So we use that um, as well. And, and specifically, um, I called on our resident sheep producer, Josh, Josh Dallin. Um, and when he produced, or when he had his producer time, we gave him about 15 minutes. I, I said, just talk about your production. Talk about why you love sheep. Talk about your daily chores. And then we opened it up for families to just have a conversation because the kids were super excited or engaged. They wanted to know what kind of names the lambs were. Um, anyway, Josh had called me, I don't know, maybe 30 minutes before he was supposed to jump on and he's like, Kelly, I have a lamb coming. This this you is lambing out right now. Um, what, what do you want me to do? And I was like, heck, let's just do it. Like, yeah. let's just jump on the Zoom call if you're comfortable with this. And so these families were able to see a producer out in their corral in their lambing shed. And we didn't, I think it lambed out and. Yeah, it they, was like 15 minutes yeah, old. Yeah, we 15 were minutes team. old. And, and so they were able to see this lamb and they were like, well, why does it have this? Why is it black? Or why does it have a long tail? We didn't know lambs had long tail. And so that also added more of the interest in the introduction into the product. Um, one of the things that I tried to do is maybe pick some unique things that are specific to Utah, but as well as stuff that they might have never tried. So we found a Euro recipe that incorporated a lot of different vegetables. So we had healthy, a healthy meal, but I think there was only one family that had tried mutton before, but they'd never had lamb. So we introduced a new product. And um, with the evaluation piece after the fact, they said that the lamb information or the lamb producer talk, as well as the recipe was their favorite because it got them out of their traditional, let's have tacos, let's have spaghetti, kind of our, our family meal rut. It was a new recipe that they could work through together as a family and and communicated and ultimately had a, a great a great conversation piece that they probably remember and then josh actually said well you guys let me know what name you want to name it and i'm going to name this this lamb that name and i can't remember i think they might have came up with euro yeah, yeah, it, yeah i think I that's remember. what it was but it, it was fun because 
the, the kids and the families were able to name the lamb. So yeah, kind of going off the meal delivery kit and everything, um, families were able to cook dinner in their own home, which provided a unique element here um, as, as the facts were laid out for Governor Herbert or Governor Cox's um, declaration of family meals. Um, spending time together as a family, cooking dinner together, um, having a place where kids feel like they can talk to their parents about whatever they're going through. Um, it's, a, it's a valuable place. So we were hoping to establish those habits in the homes of these families. Um, and then each lesson we had either games. So we had like get to know you cards that we included in some of the meal kits. Um, we also did budget and shopping tips. Um, and then the recipe that was included in the meal kit. Um, we also had different um, activities where we would have them write as many recipes as they could think of and then just kind of transfer that into a calendar. Um, and I think people were surprised at how, how easy that was because sometimes when we think about meal planning or meal prep, it just seems overwhelming. Um, and then we end up just running to McDonald's or not here because we don't have a McDonald's, but something similar. Um, so just to be able to establish those habits and show people that it is possible to incorporate all those things and still, you know, make the basketball game or whatever. Um, I think that was valuable in this program. So moving forward, um, our goal is to help make connections between the people who are consuming the food and the producers who are making the food and or growing or um, whatever. And what actually goes into that. Um, so like, like how long does it take before a lamb is ready um, or a cow is ready to eat? Um, and like Callie had mentioned, we're working to create a master curriculum. And then we also want to create master videos of producers and their stories so they can be shared um, with participants across the state. Um, it is cool to have them on a live video, but it is hard to coordinate and find people that are available. Um, we had to kind of base our weeks off of who could do what week. And so it would be hard across the state. So we're hoping that if we can have kind of a master program with the master video, then they can find those things. Um, and then it can kind of be tailored if you only have three weeks to do the program or whatever, then um, this would make it um, possible and feasible that way. So yeah, our goal, our goal of this was just to teach about family dinner, the importance of that, making family connections and then where food comes from. Um, yeah. And, and the family dinner project that the Utah Farm Bureau, that curriculum is actually a face-to-face -face cooking class with families. And, and so I would like to probably pilot test this as well, but because of COVID, we had that opportunity to connect Garfield County with Fox Elder County producers. We don't have a lot of produce growing in Garfield County, especially on the west side. And so I reached out to a Farm Bureau member in Enterprise. And so we're connecting individuals to local producers across our state. Um, we, we could probably get lamb producers and beef producers here in Garfield County, but any, anything else, we don't produce a lot of other commodities here. And, and so it's great virtually to be able to opt into other revenues. Uh, so I guess if you're ready to use something like this, um, I'm more than happy to ask additional or answer additional questions. Um, we're still kind of working on that final, final outline, final piece before we get it uh, published or, or readily, a packaged readily available product. But ultimately, this is something that you could connect with your counterpart in your county, uh, your Create Better Health ambassador, and your local Farm Bureau and just get this up and going. Um, I, I would love to get some other entities involved, such as like Utah pork producers and um, maybe talk to Smithfield and, and some of these other companies that also would show some information 
that this is the start of your process. This is the method to get it to your farm to table. Um, so I guess that if you have any questions, I'm happy to expand a little bit more. Um, if I get another crazy thought that, I, that we might have forgot, I might chime in, but. Well, thanks, Kelly and Jill. You know, I as you were speaking, I just sort of said, it's in my mind, it's we have several little cottage industries um, in our community here. I live in, in Providence, Utah, just south of Logan. It seems to be there are these cottage industries of the meal kit delivery type, right? So they sort of prepackage the meals. Sometimes they're cooked, sometimes it's just ingredients, et cetera. And I wonder what the market size was. And I put it in the chat here. It's 15.21 billion. That's with a B in 2021. And is expected to grow, you know, 17% over the next uh, uh, about 10 years. So I think it, it it's really, this is interesting. If we could, have you ever thought about partnering with one of these sort of groups? And so they sort of provide some of the kit, but, mm -hmm. but you provide sort of the farm to fork element, right? Or, or where does your food come from element? That yeah. sort of thing. Yeah, so that's interesting you said that because Utah Farm Bureau is actually doing their own kit. It's the best of Utah or taste of Utah or, or something like that. And so we've been in, in communication with them to continue this because they, they kind of are, they've taken this from their farmers feeding Utah kind of design, as well as this virtual family dinner project and meshing those two. Um, so how can we get food direct to consumers? And so I, I've seen a couple of them. I haven't purchased any, but they've got the salsas or the meats or the, the honeys. And so if we can continue this partnership of here's a, a card that, and that's kind of the, the videos that Jill talked about, these master videos of producers, it'd be like this honey came from White Lakes Farms in Genola, Utah, and then it's got a QR code where they can scan it with their phone or pull it up on a computer, and it's got a quick little four-minute video of, of White Lakes Honey Farm. And they're like, oh, that guy's name is Adam, and he's been raising bees for 27 years, and he grew up here, but I can connect with him now. And then also we would add that Create Better Health or that family meal um, element to it of how do you do meal planning or some conversation pieces. And then I guess we didn't talk about this, but there's actually follow-up questions of you make your meal together, but now what can you talk about on the, the dinner table? So what was your favorite part about watching Josh in the lambing shed? And that's a conversation starter at the dinner table. What was that guy's name from Enterprise? What was the produce that he he grew? We're eating some of his tomatoes right now. Um, so that that is also something that's kind of evolved from this project. And I hope that we can continue this this relationship with with Farm Bureau and continue to do the ag promotion piece. 